Hi folks, good morning. This is officially what is known as D-Day plus zero. Uh, the 9th of September, it's roughly about 10 past 10 in the morning. I'm just gonna bring you right back down through the palace and of course I'm gonna bring you through all the events today. It's a big day coming up. Um, we have, I'll tell you all about King Charles III's commitments. Today he is expected to return from Balmoral. Um, I'm going to head down to the palace though first. I want to show you the crowds of people that are here from all over the world, tourists and locals alike. It's absolutely incredible to see the amount and outpouring of love and support for Her Majesty the Queen. So enough from me um, right now, well my face, but I'm going to turn you around and show you exactly where I am. I've just come out of Green Park Station and I'm going to make my way down towards the palace. Now ladies and gents, I do expect that I am going to film all the day's events every single day. Now we've all understood the disaster of the live streams at the moment, expecting that the server is overwhelmed. So we will upload these every night, but I just wanted to show you our pathway and our walkway towards the palace and the outpouring of grief, love and emotion for the most famous woman in the world. It's D-Day plus zero. Tomorrow is D-Day one. And then you have D-Day plus two, D-Day three, D-Day four, all the way up to the 10th day. Rumors are that the funeral will be Monday the 19th of December. And that will be an official bank holiday. Um, but today's events are now interestingly enough there has been a very strict strategic plan for the queen's funeral that they update every two years uh, the responsibility of the ascension and the planning of the funeral um, obviously overseen by king charles iii but that responsibility has always been bestowed on what was known as the Earl Marshal, or the Duke of Norfolk. He has always been in charge of the ascension of the King and the Queen's funeral. So King Charles is expected to meet with him today to approve and scrutinize the carefully choreographed events that are gonna take place in the next 10 days. Uh, King Charles III, Please forgive me, I'll have to get used to saying that. Um, is expected to return to London today from Balmoral. The schedule so far involves all the church bells will be ringing consecutively around the country for a solid hour. And that's at noon today. And then at one o'clock, there is going to be a gun salute by the Royal, the King's Troop Royal Artillery at certain points around London, but the points we are aware of are the Tower of London and Hyde Park. So my plan today, after we finish showing you the crowds and the floral tributes at the palace and all the press to the left here, will be to get down to Parliament, all 650 elected members of the House of Commons are due to pay their tributes today to the Queen and the Lords in the House of Lords. The King is, King Charles III is expected to meet the new Prime Minister, what a few days in London, Liz Truss, to, well his first His first engagement as king and his first audience as monarch is with Liz Trust today. Saturday, all the MPs are being recalled to Parliament because they have to re swear their loath oath of allegiance to King Charles III. So every member in emergency seating in Parliament will be on Saturday. That is where we also expect 
the Ascension Council will formally announce and accept King Charles III as king. And that will take place at St. James's Palace. So please forgive me. Yesterday I was under the illusion of the impression that would be today. But we have been informed that any of the plans that were the strict plans that were in place are subject to change. And here we are, heading down around the palace. I think Let's take I you right across him. here. Thousands of people here, folks. Now, I am going to try and do my best to get you as close as I can to everything over the next few days, but I will be competing with millions and millions of people. Um, as much as I thought I might have known the plan for the funeral, um, things are changing every day, but we're just trying to get the updates as best we can, unfortunately. Unlike Sky News and BBC and CNN, I don't have a researcher, it's all down to me, but uh, you'll forgive me if I do make a few mistakes. I will do the best I can to bring you through the events as they happen day to day. Busy week for me ahead, but this is history in the making and there's nowhere else I'd rather be right now. So you can see the thousands of people that are here and it is right now only 10.35. All your comments are amazing by the way folks. No doubt even King Charles himself has said the outpouring of grief will be a great, and the support <laughs> she's getting will be a great solace to the royal family. Um, I feel like there's a queue to get inside that section. I'm not going to focus too much around here today, but what I will do... Uh, just say that first. With oh yes, of course. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought we were allowed in there. Do you follow the barrier line? I obviously did the you wrong thing already, you guys. Oh, there's only a way of coming around here. Okay. We've got to figure out. So they have a crowd control measure in place, as you can see. Um, because, well, I mean, the hundreds of thousands of people are going to be here over the next few days. Now, it doesn't seem too long when these barriers were put up for the Platinum Jubilee, all of which we have online. So if you feel you'd like to celebrate the Queen and celebrate her legacy, please check out our Platinum Jubilee coverage. And that was day one, day two, day three, day four. I think the biggest celebration, of course, was the Platinum party pageant party at the palace so so this is what's happening here right now you've got to follow the crowd to get into the queue to come around the front of the palace oh wow well we'll keep going we'll see what we can do I expect this is all going all the way down to Hyde Park corner that's the impression I'm getting Try and skip the queue if I can. No. Yeah, we can get in there. I did try to muscle my way in there. That's not really fair, I guess, because people will object. I'll do it when the police is head has passed. Okay, so we'll just maybe sneak in here. Just want to get some documentation of this this is my way of trying to angling in alongside the people here everybody just queuing up in their thousands to play their floral their respects and their tributes to the queen it's insane so this is where you have to go all the way back down to we're on constitution hill by the way here's cnn this is where we have to pay our respects by heading down this direction. Now, I'm not going to keep you in this queue, but I'll bring you. This is the beauty of recording it. 
is that I'll be able to just include you at the more poignant moments of the queue. Stay tuned, we'll be back very shortly. Okay, so the police have informed me that the queue is about an hour and a half. And to be honest, you guys, with everything that's happening today, that is not gonna work well with my timing. So let's just see what we can do. We'll head around uh, the front of the palace as close as we can get without actually walking past it. But the flowers and the crowds of the world are here. Um, my plan today is to go to Parliament because that is where all the MPs will be sitting in Parliament at noon. All the church bells, which I'm assuming will include Big Ben, but we'll definitely head down by Westminster Abbey, are going to ring all over the country. Every church in the country is being encouraged to ring their church bells for a full hour. And from then, the next part will be the gun salute. And I will need to get then from Westminster to the Tower of London to witness that. I'll try and get that in for you as well. That is very, very loud. 96 shots will be fired of the cannons by the King's the Royal, the King's Artillery, the Royal Troop King's Artillery, who are always responsible for firing of the cannons. Um, 10 seconds apart, 90 seconds, 96, each one for each year of her life. So I'm just going to walk through the crowds here if we can. Show you around. So this is where everybody's arriving to, hopefully trying to lay their flowers and pay their respects. An hour and a half queue, good luck. An hour and a half. Okay. I was hoping if I had uh, managed to get some form of fake ID or press pass, I would have a better access to all the activities in the area, but I said it better not in case I get caught. <laughs> I shouldn't have given away my secrets there. Okay, let's get a little look over here and we'll see what's happening. Okay, so the international media, as I showed you last night, all assembled here as I'm sure they will be for the run-up to the next 10 days and I believe there's going to be a period of national mourning after the funeral which we suspect will be Monday the 19th of September now there's no information as of yet about coronation or crownings that could take an extra six months I mean her Majesty the Queen became Queen in 1952, but her coronation didn't take place until June 1953. Uh, they expected the weather to be a bit better. A bit like why they host her birthday celebrations always at the, in June, the troop in the colour. Because her birthday is 21st of April, but as we know, the Queen has two birthdays. What I think I'll do, actually, is because of the crowds here at the moment, and I expect that they won't be, they won't be waning. Hi! Normal service is still resuming, as you can see here, folks. This is the Household Cavalry Lifeguards, and they're actually on their way to their guard change at Horse Guards Parade. A very sad day for these boys as well. These are the personal security of the Queen. As you can see, a lot of people are, think this is especially because of the Queen, but it's not. They're just heading down to their 
standard guard change and refer to my household cavalry horse guard change video on the site folks that will explain all so normal services resume for them they have suspended the changing of the guard of the foot soldiers of the queen but a very sad day for the lifeguard regiment they are the personal security of the queen and no doubt will play a huge role in the queen's funeral that's the lifeguard regiment they're going to be relieving the blues and royals who will be coming off duty and famous past blues and royals of course prince william and prince harry prince harry serving two tours in afghanistan with the blues and royals just wanted to show you up here the victoria memorial crowds have assembled up there as well thousands of people now instead of getting right to the palace gates we can get as far as that barrier there and we can see the tributes from there hopefully let me bring you up as i said an hour and a half queuing isn't practical today with so much going on i'm really curious as to know when king charles iii returns i'm assuming he'll be returning in here to buckingham palace that would be his new home, of course, the London Home and Office of King Charles III and his consort Queen Camilla. Um, or will he be heading into Clarence House first, which presumably will now become the home of the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge, Prince William and his wife Catherine. Um, I assumed automatically he would become the Prince of Wales, but that doesn't seem to be the case. My friend Dawn is like my researcher. She's brilliant. She's been looking everything up for me, and apparently he has to receive that as an investiture from the king himself. So that no doubt will arrive. And we expect, fully expect, he will become the Prince of Wales. Interviewing people here. So the floral tributes, I wonder if we can see from there. You know, I was just reading a very interesting fact there as well. The Queen has welcomed more than 15 prime ministers in her lifetime, more than any other sovereign in this country. But this is what absolutely struck me. One of her very first was Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill, who has exceptionally fond memories of the Queen and was a great source of strength and support to the Queen when she ascended yeah. as a very young girl. I mean, 25 years of age, and she became queen. <laughs> um, Churchill was born in 1874, and Liz Truss, her most recent prime minister, was born in 1975. That's 101 years between them. Isn't that absolutely, I just found that absolutely mind-blowing. Not only that, she's the most travelled monarch or sovereign of any in history. And let's take a little look down here now. Um, there's going to be so much more to focus on than just the palace this week. Of course, floral tributes are being laid at Balmoral. They're being laid as well at Windsor. Um, what's expected to happen is the Queen is going to be travelling to Edinburgh and she's going to be laid in state there in Holyrood House Holyrood Palace my apologies and from there is expected that the Queen 
after people have had time to pay their respects, will then be traveling by train into King's Cross. And then she'll be brought here to the state rooms in Buckingham Palace, to the throne room, I believe. And from there, there will be a procession from Buckingham Palace all the way down to Westminster Hall. Now, I cannot confirm or deny because according to separate reports, she'll be laying in state in Westminster Hall. That is absolutely happening, but whether it's for three days or four days, I've seen conflicting reports in the press, but it is unfortunately, despite his grief, business as usual for the King, King Charles III. This is soldier's uniform. I haven't seen any of the the usual royal fans that I see during the major events that take place here. We met them in Kensington Palace when they unveiled the Diana Memorial statue. And I've seen them camping out for the Platinum Jubilee and for the Diamond Jubilee. I was here for that too in 2012 as well. But I'm sure they'll all arrive. One particular chap is always dressed head to toe in his British flag suit. Now this is just giving you an idea of the atmosphere in the area. But I am going to be coming back here every day. I may come back here in an evening time because it tends to be much quieter then. That is when we might get closer to the gates. But queuing for the hour and a half doesn't seem to be feasible. I was, of course, if you watched my Rest in Peace Her Majesty the Queen video, which some of you are seeing, we uploaded last night, which some of you are seeing for the first time today. Um, I was actually at the palace and we did not receive an announcement. The way we knew the Queen died was the lowering of the flag at half mass. But apparently, again, according to my friend Maureen, um, that coincided exactly with the announcement of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. So, we have incident support units here, treatment centres here, and that is no doubt to facilitate the hundreds of thousands of people that will be expected in this area in the next few weeks. It's Clarence House, the former home the White House in between the trees, the former home of the former Prince Charles, now King Charles III. Let's have a quick look over there. But as you can see, it's never ending. They just keep coming and coming and coming. Here's my friend, Alan. So tours are resuming today. Margaret is doing a City of Westminster tour and the all-in-one I'm filming so she's up this weekend taking care of those tours um, she's gonna have a tough day it's hard to navigate around I will do the best I can now to get tomorrow's a big day with the Ascension Council at St. James's Palace so I do have two private tours as Ellen and uh, I will try to work around them so this is Clarence House. So now the former home of His Royal Highness, Prince Charles. Now, His Majesty, King Charles III. Okay, so that's the palace this morning, ladies and gents. I'll just giving you an idea of the crowds assembling. Um, yesterday was a bit erratic, so I did give you a little bit of false information with regards to the funeral procession. 
from when it leaves Buckingham Palace and heads to oh, the Palace of Westminster. Instead of heading through Admiralty Arch down the M, we believe I uh, read it, it depends on what press you read, you see. This is the difficulty. But we believe they're actually going to go through horse guards. So that's where we will head today, making our way down towards Parliament. You see where the bells will toll at 12 noon. Expect it to be unanimously all over the country. And then, of course, we'll be heading to the Tower of London for the 1 p.m. gun salute. So apart from King Charles meeting with the Earl Marshal of the Duke of Norfolk to finalize the funeral plans and meeting with Liz Truss, terribly sad that despite his grief, his duty comes first. At 73 years of age, most people have retired Prince Charles is uh, King Charles. I'm so sorry. I will do that. It's just starting. So this is where we'll expect this announcement tomorrow. Now I'm a bit concerned, so I'm going to have a look to see, but it's unlikely. Um, according to funeral plans, it should have been today, but I believe on recent news reports that has been changed till tomorrow. And that will take place here anytime between 10 and 11 a.m. So King Charles will be here and will be confirmed as king by the Ascension Council. Oh, they should have the drapings, maybe. I believe the fiery court, the balcony here that I've been speaking about for so many years about this event that's going to be coming up. And now it's actually here. It's, it's, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's absolutely insane. So they have removed the barriers from here. This is where you'd usually come for the changing of the guard ceremony, the beginning of it. But we suspect this balcony will be draped with red velvet tomorrow morning. King Charles will be formally confirmed as king by the essential council in here tomorrow at 10 a.m. And that balcony will be draped in royal robes or royal red velvet and the gentleman will come out and formally proclaim King Charles III as the new sovereign and that will take place all over the UK in Windsor also takes place in New York and apparently it's exceptionally bad luck for any future king and queen to witness that statement in person this will all be happening tomorrow so I will try to get down here but I believe that it'll be only press access only so I'll see what I can do it's at that very window that Edward VIII and Wallace Simpson arrived to witness that statement in person. And of course we know King Edward VIII was never crowned. So big, big day for the palace here, St. James's Palace tomorrow. 10 a.m. That all kicks off here. King Charles and the proclamation from the balcony here at Fiery Court. The Queen is dead, long live the King. So that's coming up tomorrow, you guys. You see, I expect some people expect that's going to happen today, but that is not the case. That has been changed. It was expected to happen the day of. So this is the gates of the Commonwealth building. They seem to be opened up there. And you'll see all the flags of the Commonwealth and people assembling here outside St. James's and preparations will be underway for that meeting with the Ascension Council tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to make our way down now. We'll head down the Mall. We'll head through Horse Guards and down towards Parliament. And I did film down here last night, but it was really dark. So I'll give you a much clearer view of all the flags that are flying at half mast. Um, yeah, I just met some former customers of mine that were on a tour with me last year. And we'll see what happens on D-Day plus zero.
so naturally most of the day here I'm going to save my ballerie I think most of the action will take place up until two and three o'clock and after that I will be preparing for D-Day plus one so we're just going to head straight down here and take a right so bear with me a second folks um, there's no need to bring you through here but I'll take you through Horse Guards Parade in just a moment. So I'm just making my way straight down there towards the arch and I'm going to take a right over into Horse Guards Parade. Just one final look at this very surreal image. Buckingham Palace, the Victoria Memorial. And the flag at half mast. Unbelievable. Just a quick stop here, ladies and gents, to show you the statue of the Queen's parents, His Majesty King George VI and Her Majesty the Queen Mother. Um, incredible king. Influ king here during the bombing campaign of World War II and when monarchs were fleeing persecution from Adolf Hitler all over mainland Europe. Just bear with me a second. King George VI refused to leave the palace and the Queen Mother was quoted as saying the children will not leave me, I will not leave the King and the King certainly won't leave. I like the idea that she is now being reunited with her beloved father and her beloved mother who lived to the ripe old age of 101 and of course her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh and her sister her Royal Highness, Princess Margaret. I like the idea of them all being reunited for eternity as they will be buried together in the chapel, St. George's Chapel on the Windsor Estate. Okay, so you can see streams of people still arriving, but we're heading in direction of a couple of the services that are gonna take place today to commemorate the Queen. I do believe they're having a memorial service for her, an impromptu one with the Prime Minister and some of the MPs in St. Paul's Cathedral today. What I'm going to have to try to do over the next few days, you guys, is highlight what I think are the most important spots because regretfully even I can be at the same place in three different places at one time, but I will try to bring you highlights of some of the major events that will be taking place in the next 10 days so if you get any updates yourself folks if you have any preference for where i should be what events if you'll see any taking place or if any of you can be my researchers actually and give me a heads up i can't imagine i'm gonna have too much too much time to answer your comments at the moment but i certainly will be reading them all so any advice or tricks or tips you hear of, please don't hesitate to share them with us in the comments section. And I will do my very best to bring you to as many of the major events on every day, all the way up to the 10th day. I haven't even mentioned coronation ceremonies yet because there's so much more to do before then so at the moment we'll just take it one day at a time it's the grand old duke of york who had 10,000 men son of king george iii of england famous last king of the americas who famously lost colonies to the americas but now we're going to head down here and this is where the Household Cavalry, the Lifeguard Household Cavalry Horse Guard change is taking place as we speak. So normal service for them as well, even though the foot soldiers changing of the guard has been suspended. The Horse Guards are changing over and we will see one side the Lifeguards and the other the Blues and Royals. But again, this is further explained to you in the 
I did a video on the horse guards around the changeover, the changing of the horse guards here at Horse Guards Parade. Now we're heading in towards Horse Guards Parade. And if you look straight ahead, open over that kind of open clay space there, this is where Henry VIII used to joust. It's where the beach volleyball events and the 2012 Olympic Games took place. And it's also where the Trooping the Colour ceremony takes place every year in June. But a very significant building as well. Of course, you'll see it's framed there by the London Eye. The beautiful building you see in front of you there is the former offices of the Duke of Wellington. And we're going to head through Horse Guards and straight down to Downing Street and the Houses of Parliament. And as you can see, all the flags we're at half mass now where I'm focusing right there now behind those green trees straight ahead is the back garden of Downing Street home to the British Prime Minister Liz Truss I can't believe how many different things I'm gonna to have to get because these things kind of tend to roll off the tongue when you say them so frequently so I'm really gonna to have to practice His Majesty King Charles III and the Prime Minister Liz Truss I mean, I said it as well yesterday, but I'll say it again today. This is the former offices of the, this is the chief offices of the Admiralty. Uh, one very famous gentleman that worked in there was a chap called Sir Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond, folks, but also the author of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. But now, let's head down. So at exactly 11.30, the Blues and Royals will come out here and down towards that memorial and make their way back up the Mall over Buckingham Palace and onto their barracks, which are also located at Hyde Park. There's a huge crowd assembled here for the changing of the horse guards. And on your left, the regiment you see of the Blues and Royals. And on your right, the lifeguards, aka guarding the life of the Queen. So we're going to go through this building in the middle, and that will take us right out on to Whitehall, the corridor of power. But again, you can refer to my guard change and horse guard change video and these guys will be truly emotional today as they are the personal security of the Queen and have been surrounding the Queen's royal carriages on state occasions and ceremonial events since the 1700s they no doubt will play an integral part in the fun funeral in the coming week to 10 days or so okay let's head around here I never recommend people stand behind these horses they've just had their breakfast and they're just going on duty but it's not about the horse guards today you'll just get a better view there again it's about Parliament and the bells of Westminster Abbey and all the church bells. In fact, I'm assuming they'll probably ring them at St. Margaret's Church as well. And they are muffling the sound of the bells, by the way, to make it sound more solemn and respectful for the Queen. Are we just gonna have to squeeze through here? Hi, darling. Sorry, I'm meeting guides everywhere. And we're going to walk through horse guards here. That will take us on out onto Whitehall and Downing Street. This 
obviously two soldiers on duty on either side here now in a moment as well. Minus a horse. These chaps, like the foot soldiers of the Queen, will do two hours on, four hours off. Two hours on, four hours off in a 24 hour duty. He's probably one of the taller ones I've met or I've seen. He's responsible for this area here. And Lord, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever come to London, don't ever walk inside that alcove there because you will hear all about it. Trust me. Usually the startled commanders make way for the Queen's Guard and people get such a fright because they are furious when this happens. There's another one on duty in that corner and the soldiers you see here, the mounted horse guards, are on duty for an hour at a time because of animal rights for the horses. Let me just show you where we are. Just right here in Whitehall. There are the horse guards on duty in their sentry boxes. Right, let's make our way towards Downing Street. And this is the corridor of power. In the daylight. I did attempt to bring you down here last night, so forgive me if the lighting was exceptionally bad which it was but you will clearly be able to see all the flags flying at half mast here on Whitehall and that's going to take us in to Parliament So continuing on, I'm going to take you down here now towards Downing Street. So my plan for the next few highlight of events is I will stay in Parliament for like 20 minutes to show you the bells ringing, muffled bells ringing on the church, on all the churches. And then from there, I will take a quick hop, skip and a jump on the district line to the Tower of London. Yeah. It's roughly about a 13 minute journey from the Palace of Westminster. Now here's security for the Prime Minister. She will have a very busy day ahead of her as well. And then from the Tower I will see where I'll try and get a vantage point for the 96 gun salute. There it is. A wonderful memorial to the women of World War II and we know that the Queen played an integral part no, no, no. during World War II. It's on this very street as well. Herself and Princess Margaret, bless them, came incognito. They were desperate to be part of the Victory in Europe Day celebrations and she is quoted as saying it was an amazing show of support and strength by the whole country coming out and the relief that the war was finally over. Terrified of being recognized, it didn't stop herself and Princess Margaret coming out and joining the masses. Could you imagine? I believe there's a wonderful documentary about that online as well. And here is 10 Downing Street. Oh, so somebody's gonna be on the move shortly, so we're gonna wait and see. Prime Minister will be on the move, because the reason I know that is these white motorbikes will escort her to Parliament. Behind the, the gates there you'll see the world's press and the media assembling. Downing Street is like the blue house there on the corner. So the gates are about to open. We're going to be in the perfect spot when we head over here to witness the Prime Minister on the move. Very shortly. As soon as those bikes start revving up, she'll be heading down to Parliament. For a session of the 650 MPs is expected to take up to eight hours today because all of the MPs, the elected members of Parliament of the House of Commons and all the members of the House of Lords will be paying their own respects to Her Majesty the Queen. So she's going to be on the move very shortly. Uh, 
and the bells will start ringing at 12 and then we'll head to the Tower of London for the gun salute. We want to see those bikes revving up. Oh, I'm so sorry. So instead of being moved out of the way at the front of Downing Street, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here to the centre of the road. That'll be a great spot to see her heading down towards the Parliament, which is sitting today at 12 noon. And we're going to head straight down in to Parliament Square. This, in my opinion, is probably the better vantage point because when the white motorbikes come out, they will stop the traffic either on this side of the road or that side of the road for the Prime Minister Liz Truss to make our way to the Houses of Parliament. I can't help but thinking, I've had to put the umbrella up now, of course, the obligatory London shower. We will see some of the members of Parliament all heading out the gates there and making their way down to the Houses of Parliament, where we'll be heading shortly. But I still it just cannot get it out of my head that today is Friday. The Queen had an audience with the new Prime Minister Liz Truss on Tuesday. Uh, and she invited her to, well, form a new government, as is commonplace. Um, prior to her, she had met Boris Johnson. So to, and I keep saying this, to the very end, she cannot have been well. 48 hours before she died, she still, to the very last day, fulfilled her commitments to the country and the people and the parliament, the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth and its realms. Unbelievable, an incredible work ethic from a woman who has de devoted her life to service for 70 years. Just re quite remarkable. just waiting on the Prime Minister to leave now to show you a bit of the security and how it works. She'll just be making the very short journey down here towards the Houses of Parliament and right in front of you there is the Cenotaph which is the most important British war memorial in the world dedicated to every fallen soldier from many British conflict including Commonwealth countries where the Queen for years on Remembrance Day every year laid wreaths of poppies to commemorate the war dead. Now that would be the responsibility of His Majesty King Charles III. Okay, so they're going to start moving people out of the way shortly there, folks. And you will see what it's like to transport the Prime Minister <laughs> down to Parliament. Thank you. Welcome. Now, ladies and gents, she's on the way. So they're moving out the gates. I just want to show you how the security works. She's on her way to the Houses of Parliament. Here comes the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss. stopping traffic we don't know which way they're gonna go I expect it's gonna be this way yeah it's this way so here comes her car it's gonna be a very brief come to Parliament there she is the new PM Keep the road blocked. There's more on the way. That is where we're headed right now, you guys. Straight down because in the next, let's have a look. Sorry, the rain and the umbrella in the next seven to eight minutes 
all the church bells are about to ring continuously for an hour to commemorate Her Majesty the Queen. Now I'm trying to keep the umbrella out of sh shot of the camera as well as filming and guiding. Gentlemen, that's where us women have superpowers. We're multitaskers. And here we go. So Parliament is sitting today. I think I may have suggested this maybe once or twice today. And they expect each individual MP and each member of the House of Lords will offer their condolences to the Queen. Yeah, I'm just thinking for the jaywalking there, guys. So I want to capture the Abbey. I hope Big Ben will sound as well. It's been obviously four years under renovation. It's back in all its glory. However, the bells of Big Ben are still silent. Unless today something will happen. At exactly midday. Now the weather the last few days has been horrendous. It's just out pours of torrential rain and then periods of sunshine. So I'm hoping this is short lived. However, it's been continuously raining now for about 20 minutes. It doesn't see any sign of abating, but hopefully the sun. Ooh, that scared me. Hopefully the sun will shine at the Tower of London. Wow, she keeps banging that door. This is actually one of the most photographed telephone boxes in London, and this one gives you an amazing view of the Houses of Parliament in Big Ben. I'm trying to navigate my way around the best way I can. This is probably the, one of the more dangerous junctions in London. You never know when you can pass. go one way anyway there's a red light there it's still a red light so I'm hoping I can cross here oh it's a bit dodgy but we've done it okay right where I want to be it's Churchill and the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben So exactly noon, all the church bells are expected to ring throughout the country and what better place to be than underneath Big Ben for him to give us the exact time and then we will pan around here to St. Margaret's Church and Westminster Abbey directly behind it, those wonderful Nicholas Hawkmore Towers, the last edition of the Abbey, 1745. First, let's see if Big Ben will strike at 12. maybe 60 seconds
go. The church bells of the Abbey. A moment of silence for the Queen. suspect they're ringing it on the exact minute every minute for the next hour as eventful I'm afraid as I thought it would be ladies and gents for the last there we go yeah what they're doing is they're ringing it exactly on the minute for the next 60 minutes timing it perfectly instead of continuous ringing Okay, so next I'm going to make my way here, ladies and gents, down to the Tower of London. Okay, guys, so as you can see, I've just arrived and come out of Tower Hill Station. And we're just going to cross the road and head over here down to the Tower of London. You might just faintly hear in the distance, the bells are still tolling down here. I expect that's the chapel of St. Peter of Advincula inside the tower and we have the church of the All Hallows by the tower which we will be approaching in just a moment reputed to be the oldest church in the city of London there's an amazing Roman exhibit downstairs if you ever get a chance to visit I'll show you now in just a moment Oh, I actually took you in there um, during my London Bridge versus Tower Bridge video. Ooh, we're a little bit wobbly. Let me steady the camera. Now we're just going to follow the crowds and see where we're allowed to go. That's better. Ooh, noisy little rascal behind me there.
so the reason we're here is at 1 p.m. There'll be 96 rounds on the gun salute. Uh, the responsibility of which is always the King's Troop Royal Artillery. And we'll just see where we're allowed to go. Or how close we can get. At the very least, we'll uh, no doubt hear it. And it's quite deafening. But they will be firing the cannon with every... Ooh, oh, this is where people are going, okay. Every 10 seconds. All right, this is where we're headed. Let's see if we can get a good vantage point. At the very least, we'll hear it anyway from here. So we may just position ourselves around this area. closest we can get I'm afraid okay so I think this is the closest they're gonna let us get but if you look very closely down there you'll see they are set up we have about 25 minutes to wait but this is the best vantage point we can get I believe here at the Tower of London this is where people seem to be gathering so I'm just following the seat. I think it's the only place we're allowed to come. Unless of course it might have been better to be across the river but it's in hindsight a great thing. I'm gonna stay put now anyway folks. And I'll be right back to you just before it begins. just look straight down into the corner down there you will see some of the staff of the Tower London in London assembling along the wall and there seems to be a bee feeder or one of the yeoman wardens pacing up and down behind some of the cannons you may better see this um, if you have a, on a big screen TV but this is the closest I can get ladies and gents and there does seem to be a big crowd assembling down there, but I still think our vantage point is a little better here because at least we will be able to see smoke from the cannons and we will most certainly hear them. As you can see, there's a big crowd assembling. Let me just show you here, I'll minimize it. They're all right behind us here. So I feel like we're at the right spot. I'm right at the barrier tempting and it runs the whole way down I think it's more about the symbolism of it 
and people just feeling like they're part of some little piece of history which it truly is hope you can hear me okay there folks I'm not shouting out my commentary all these people around me but we are right in front of the barrier here as close as we can get close as we can get City Hall in the background, which is the offices of the Greater London Authority and the Greater London Mayor, Sadiq Khan. So you'll see there's people assembled on the other side of the river as well, on the south bank, close to Tower Bridge. We have the Yeoman Wardens all parading out of the tower, if you can just see them there, marching. And their uniforms as well will now be changed to CR3, and now be on their new uniforms, which presumably they should be wearing today. King Charles Rex III, the third, and for your information, King Charles I of England was the gentleman who was publicly executed under the orders of Oliver Cromwell in 1649. They need a 12-year period of no monarchy, headed by the Lord Protector Oliver Cromwell. And then King Charles I's son returned from exile during the period of the restoration of the monarchy, 1660. He was known as the Merry Monarch. And Charles II was also the king during the Great Plague and the Great Fire of London. And now a new Charles era has begun. King Charles III, which officially started the 8th of September, 2022. The end of the second Elizabethan age and the beginning of the new King Charles reign. I can't do much about the noise in the background folks but not to worry. I think a lot of people are going to be very alarmed about how loud these cannons are. This is the closest we can get to the ceremony unfortunately folks. No one else is allowed down there. except maybe the staff of the Tower of London. As you can see, the Omen Wardens, protectors of the Crown Jewels. Well, they've had about 35 years of military service and a community of which still live in the Tower of London to this day. It's a chapel, a pub, and there are apartments inside the tower. Again, you can refer to our Tower of London video. That was wonderfully narrated and done by my colleague Margaret, for those of you who haven't seen it. And I'm all very shortly going to hear the 96 rounds. One round every 10 seconds to represent every year of the Queen's life. I just see the cream. I was right, the sun came out. This is also taking park at Hyde Park today, taking place. And it says some other stations as well, which I'm assuming is probably Wellington Barracks.
They seem to be getting ready. For some reason I find this more emotional than any day so far. could hear a pen drop folks <coughs> the silence is incredible it's moving it's powerful
And that seems to be 96 folks every 10 seconds. So it would have taken about 16 minutes, I think, in total. Rounds of applause. <coughs> And that, ladies and gents, is the gun salute at the tower. So this is D-Day D Zero. Tomorrow we'll be right back to see King Charles be confirmed by the Essential Council, Ascension Council at St. James's Palace and many, many more activities to come. Thanks for joining me, folks. I will be back tomorrow. Get this uploaded tonight. Don't forget the King will be making his speech tonight, the first address to the nation, a pre-recorded address and he is on his way from Balmoral as we speak. He boarded a flight about an hour ago and has in a meeting in an audience. His first audience with the Prime Minister is Sovereign today and then in a pre-recorded address. New King Charles III will be addressing the nation at 6 p.m. on the National News. Sinead signing out here in London. See you tomorrow. Speak very soon. Just one additional extra, some amazing footage today of the new His Majesty King Charles III and the Queen Consort Camilla outside Buckingham Palace, compliments of our amazing tour guide Matt, who witnessed this in person today. <laughs>